Hi, my name is Pause, and I'm going to show you how to max free to play. I will start off by showing you the most efficient methods known to free to play, and then proceed to show alternative methods that are a step down from the best. The purpose of these alternative methods is to give you options, because in some cases the best methods available may not be to your liking. Although, I would highly recommend spending at least a little bit of time getting used to the best methods before just throwing in the towel. For example, at first I really didn't like snow fishing, but I got over it and I snow fished to 200 mil fishing XP. I'd like to start off this video by saying something I think is very important. The purpose of this game is to have fun. So if you're not having fun with the method you're doing, start doing a different method. This video is to guide you in efficiency. If the most efficient method is making you feel like not playing, it is therefore inefficient. The key to success in huge skilling goals is to stay consistent. If you keep playing every day, I promise you, you will max free to play. The current cost to max free to play is 513,315,000 GP. And the current time and efficient hours played is 2,420 hours. This means if you play for 3.3 EHP per day and make 703,000 GP per day, it will take you two years to max free to play. Once you've started to make your account, I would suggest to make the login email something that isn't a real email by using characters you typically cannot use in an email like a number sign, and also use a fake website. For example, lolxd hashtag at yourmom.com. Then make a brand new email for the only purpose of being the recovery email to this RuneScape account, and only use it for that. If you do these two things, and you don't click on any sketchy links, you have a very small chance of being hacked. Now, think very hard about what you want your username to be, because you cannot change it without ruining your account build. Once you start on Tutorial Island, I would recommend watching EasyScape's Free-to-Play Quest speedrunning guide in order to efficiently complete the Free-to-Play quests. You really only need enough quest points to start Dragon Slayer, so if you'd like, you can stop there. His video shows you how to do the quests starting from nothing, so if you already have GP on another account, I would recommend buying all the items you need beforehand and trading them over to your new Free-to-Play account. A couple things I would like to add that I don't think he mentioned in the video. One, after finishing Imp Catcher and the Witch's Potion, get your magic level to 21 and start low alking while doing the rest of the quests. You can stop at level 35. And two, you can attack Punching Bags and Varrock to level 8, which is much quicker than any other early melee XP methods. Once you have completed Dragon Slayer, you can now move on to killing Flesh Crawlers while working on the specific types of alts that you will need for efficient free to play skilling. First type of alt you'll need are runner alts for runecrafting. I'd recommend having a minimum of two, but you can have as many as you'd like. They will need to have 10 hit points and be about level 30 combat. To get that combat level, you can splash with negative 65 magic bonus and get the level you need without much effort. You'll also need to have the Edgeville respawn purchased on both of these accounts, which costs 5 mil GP per account and can be obtained by talking to the witch in Edgeville jail. You won't need this till you start runecrafting, so don't worry about getting 10 mil GP right away. The next type of alt you'll need is an account to kill your runner alts without gaining combat XP. This can be done by selecting Iron Man mode. This account can be up to 15 levels higher than your runner alts. I'd recommend getting membership on this account and killing fire giants until you get a rune skimmy. The purpose of this account is to kill your alts as fast as possible, so having high strength is beneficial. The next type of alt you'll need are Clan Wars alts. If you have a lot of idle time in your schedule where you'll be mainly AFKing combat, you don't need to worry about making these. You'll need to make exactly two of these so that your main account will stay in combat at all times while you bank for food on the other. These should have one defense and at least 50 hit points, although having higher is beneficial. You can use wines as a food source on these, which heals 11 health. You also profit from drinking wines because jugs cost more than the wines itself. The next type of alt you'll need is a kicking alt for mining. This account can be within 46 levels of your main account, and it needs 1 strength and 1 attack. You can have up to 37 attack if your main account has 99 defense and wields the best in slot free to play defense gear, but I'd recommend keeping it at 1 so you can wear whatever you want when you mine. 
Your kicking ult will use an event RPG, so its average DPS is less than your main account's average healing rate. I will get into the more technical details of how it works when I talk about mining. The next type of alts you'll need are your GP alts. I would recommend creating these first so you can start making GP as soon as possible. There are two categories of GP alts, ones you can play idly while doing click intensive skilling on your main account, and ones you can make huge amounts of GP while you train buyables on your main account. I will list some types of alts you can play passively on the side first. My personal favorite is Amethyst Mining. The profit per hour is typically around 400k, but it adds up quickly over thousands of hours of gathering skills. Another popular GPL are Rune Dragon Alts. These require a lot of effort to make, but have a greater reward in the long run. These are around 1 mil GP per hour. Zelver Scale Fishing, or Sacred Eel Fishing, is another option that tends to fluctuate frequently in GP rates, but can be a very low effort alternative. These range from 200 to 400k GP per hour. If you're into that sort of thing, flipping can also be a very profitable source of income that doesn't require much focus. Now, for higher profit alt methods. My personal favorite is Abyss Runecrafting, which ranges from 1.4 mil to 1.6 mil GP per hour. This is fairly relaxing compared to the other methods I'm about to list, and I find it way more enjoyable than anything else. As of recently, running Essence for ZMI Runecrafters has become a way of making money. This will make you up to 4 mil GP per hour, but the catch is you will need to focus so that the runecrafter doesn't lose out on XP. I will provide a link to the ZMI running discord in the description. You can also do other forms of PVM such as Zelra, which is about 1.5 mil GP per hour last time I heard. There are other, also other higher level PVM methods like raids that can be way more profitable but also require a lot of effort getting an alt to that tier. Moving on to skilling. Generally, you can train your skills in any order you prefer in free-to-play, but in these cases it would be beneficial to do certain skills before others. Cooking before prayer and crafting, mining before magic and smithing, fire making before prayer, strength before attack and defense, and prayer before combat. Idle time is an important aspect of skilling that is very worth taking advantage of. Whether you're at school, at work, or eating lunch, you can hop on your phone and load up OSRS Mobile. Combat skills make up 41% of your time to max free to play, meaning if you get in the habit of tapping your phone screen every 5 minutes, you can take off nearly a thousand hours to max free to play. Just to list a few examples of what to do in idle time, killing spiders and flush crawlers in the stronghold of security should provide you with some passive XP gains with very little effort. I personally kill spiders in class, hanging out with friends, while making coffee, and sometimes even in the shower. Another less AFK alternative with idle time is four-tick woodcutting or fishing, and gem cutting. These can be done while eating meals and will give you more EHP per hour. Typically my go-to is four-tick willows next to the Lumbridge Pond, just north of Farmer Fred's house. Just a quick tutorial on bank settings. Look on the bottom row of settings first, where it says quantity. You can change it between 1, 5, 10, X, or all. This allows you to withdraw that amount with just a left click. When you toggle the lock icon just next to the quantities, it will allow you to leave a placeholder when you withdraw an item. This is useful for when you want an item to go back in its place when you deposit it again. Lastly, click the wrench icon in the top right of your bank tab. You will see a box at the bottom that says bank fillers. These are incredibly useful for skills that involve using banks. Select all and click fill and it will fill your bank with placeholders. This is useful for when you would like to use the deposit all inventory button for a one click bank without depositing certain items you want to leave out. As I said before, you can do pretty much any skill in whatever order you prefer, but I'm going to show you the multi-skilling methods that are very much worth doing and that would be a great way to start off your account. Start with berry cooking. Make your way over to Falador Castle on the free to play PvP world. You will need an alt to run two inventories of raw fish to the range and drop them next to it. After the second inventory of fish, withdraw an inventory of big bones on your alt. While you're doing this, you should be cutting the best type of gem you can on your main account. If you can't cut gems yet, start with leather crafting. I keep my chisel in my inventory, so I don't have to keep withdrawing it every time I click deposit all. 
Once you've finished cutting two inventories of gems, withdraw all your big bones and run to the range. Start by burying the first bone, then clicking the raw fish and clicking the range. You can bury a bone every two game ticks and cook a fish every two game ticks as well. Keep repeating this until you finish your inventory, then trade your alt for a second inventory. Run back to the bank chest and repeat from the beginning. This method using swordfish, diamonds, and big bones comes out to 132,000 crafting XP per hour, 172,000 cooking XP per hour, and 18,000 prayer XP per hour. If you did this from 1 to 99 cooking, you would also obtain 96 crafting and 76 prayer. This method is altogether 1.24 EHP per hour with current free to play EHP rates, but excluding the crafting portion of it, it comes out to 1.5 EHP per hour. It is appropriate to exclude the crafting because diamond cutting is already 1 to 1 EHP. Starting from level 1 cooking with this method, just use the best fish you can cook until you can cook swordfish. The next best alternative to berry cooking is wine cooking. Start off by lighting a fire next to the GE bank booth and cooking the best available fish until level 35. From then you can cook wines. Wine cooking is 480,000 XP per hour and requires minimal effort. You can use this time to play a higher GP rate alt, such as Abyss Runecrafting. Wines don't give an XP drop until 20 game ticks after you've stopped making them. Because of this, you can theoretically store from level 35 to 200 mil cooking XP and a single XP drop. Once you've finished Doric's quest, you will be a level 8 mining. From level 8 to level 15, find the nearest 2 rock, tin, or copper mining spot. There are plenty of them in game, but the closest to a teleport spot is the Varrock West mining location, just next to the Chronicle teleport spot. You can purchase a Chronicle and 100 charges per day at Diango and Draenor Village. From level 15 to level 99, you'll be 3 tick mining iron at the Hobgoblin Mine in the Wilderness. This is where the Kicking Alt comes in. If your Kicking Alt is level 1 attack, the only wieldable item you need is an empty shortbow. Don't forget to put it on Rapid. If your Kicking Alt has a higher attack level, you will need to bring defensive gear. You will need a rune full helmet, plate body, plate legs, an amulet of defense, boots, green dehyde van braces, and a cape. As for items to bring, I'd recommend a teleport to Lumbridge, an axe, a pickaxe, a scimitar or arrows to kill hobgoblins with, in case they aggro on you, a chronicle, 10,000 nature runes, 40,000 fire runes, and approximately 14 swordfish. It is also necessary to level up your woodcutting to 57 before starting this method so that you can utilize the wilderness canoe teleport. Once you've arrived at the canoe, chop down the tree and craft the canoe into a waka. Push it into the water and board it, and then click where it says wilderness pond, no canoe trees here. It is also worth mentioning that if you do this method on a PvP world, nobody can attack you or your alt once you're in combat. This is because PvP worlds have a PJing mechanic that prohibits players from butting in on fights. Run southwest and you will arrive at the full rock iron mining spot. Next, log on to your kicking alt and switch your event RPG to defensive and start mining. The event RPG is also an item that can be purchased at Diango's store in Drainer Village. Before you start superheating with 3 tick mining, I would recommend trying to get the timing down first. Enable shift dropping in your settings and enable auto retaliate in your combat tab. Then, start attacking your main with your kicking alt. After every time your alt hits you, drop an ore and wait for your character to retaliate or turn to face your kicking alt. Then click the rock. You always need to cancel the action of mining before your character can retaliate. So at early levels, it might be necessary to bring an extra cape to wield so that you can cancel the action. Dropping ores, superheating ores, or using items on each other also cancels actions. This method was found around the time Two Tick Teeks was discovered during the 2015 Skilling Cup. Just like how if you were to attack a monster with a short bow, you instantly shoot at them. Your character also starts the action once you retaliate to an attack. The event RPG is a 3 tick weapon, so every 3 ticks your character retaliates, starts the action of combat, and can be taken advantage of by instantly starting a different action, such as mining. Something also worth mentioning that you'll probably notice once you start doing this method yourself. For whatever reason, there is a random chance of 4-ticking as well as 2-ticking with an event RPG. 
This will mess up your rhythm from time to time. If this happens, just sit still until you retaliate again and get back into the flow. Getting into superheat mining, four superheats every four iron rocks is the most efficient mining method because you are gaining smithing XP without losing mining XP. Therefore, it is what is called zero time smithing XP. Assuming you successfully superheat 90% of the rocks you mine, attaining level 99 mining will also give you 17.7 mil magic XP as well as 83 smithing. The way this method is done is by superheating just before retaliating. Then, dropping the two bars you superheated as you're moving between the two iron rocks. The third ore down, it will conveniently move to the top of your inventory once it is superheated. I will leave this clip playing for an extra few seconds so you can watch how it's done. If you can't get this method down right away, I suggest trying out the next alternatives first. The next step down is two superheats every four iron rocks. This is the method I do for mining because I don't need as much magic XP since I alked during 200 mil fishing XP. I find this way more relaxing and it also allows me to play an amethyst all on the side so I can afford doing the method. With this method, all you need to do is superheat once when you're walking between the two sets of rocks. Waiting for the retaliate after you drop the bar and ore provides some idle time which allows me to squeeze in a left click on the amethyst rock on my alt. If you're using OSRS Mobile and don't have two devices to set up your kicking alt with, 4 tick mining would be your next best option. This would also be the meta for 3 combat free to play accounts. You, you will need to lure a hobgoblin to the opposite side of the rocks and attack him with an empty short bow when you're moving between the two sets of rocks. Normally this would take 5 ticks to do, but because you have started the action with your short bow, it only takes 4 ticks. This method is roughly 57k XP per hour as opposed to 3 tick mining being around 65k XP per hour. You can also get in superheats with 4 tick mining if you would like. I personally prefer to have my camera angle set up like this so the ore is directly next to the hobgoblin and you can easily attack him after superheating. One last thing to mention about 4 tick mining. You will need to wait around 10-15 to 15 minutes for the hobgoblins to deaggro before you can start mining. In this time I'd suggest clicking on some rocks when you can to squeeze in some mining XP, or killing the hobgoblins for some additional melee XP. If there is a player using this mining spot on the PvP world, there is also a secondary spot close by that is the exact same XP rate, but involves a little bit more clicking. It is also worth noting, if you're wearing armor at this spot, you will eventually run out of run energy unfortunately. Last on the multi-skilling list is fire burying. Assuming you did this after berry cooking, level 1 to 99 fire making would also give you 76 to 84 prayer. But before you get into this, you need to first learn the basics of how to fire make at the Grand Exchange. As usual, use the best type of logs you can until you reach EUs at level 60. From level 60 to 99, fire make U logs. Once you reach the point where your character doesn't fail to light the log, you'll be able to light up to 1500 logs per hour with perfect tick. My personal preference on where to put my tinder box is somewhere in the middle of the inventory so it's closer to every log. When you light logs, you should switch between using the tinder box on the log and the log on the tinder box. This way you can minimize the amount of movement you'll need to direct your cursor. Keep your stack of noted logs in the top left of your inventory so that when you reach the bank booth on your way back, you can use the noted logs on the banker and unnote them without losing ticks. You can unnote them by clicking the 1 key on your keyboard for the first option. There are two types of directions to fire make in this instance, forwards and backwards. Forwards is the natural direction to fire make that the game forces you to go by default, which is west. Backward fire making involves clicking on the ground to move in that direction, being east in this case, and then lighting the log. I am doing a sub method of backward fire making in this clip by clicking two tiles east which allows me to naturally fire make backwards for whatever reason. All you need to do is click two tiles east, fire, making a, fire make a log on the first tile, then fire make the second log on the second tile, and repeat. There are two categories of fire making. Starting with my personal preference, mainly because it's sustainable, is walk fire making. With this method, you will start off in one of the corners of the GE booths and do backwards fire making 14 logs out. After this, move one tile north or south and one tile west of where the last log you lit ended and light 11 logs back to the GE booth. 
After lighting the 11th log, use your noted logs on the banker, then immediately light the 12th log. After lighting the 12th log, move to the opposite GE booth corner and start again. This category of fire making is run fire making. This method is slightly more AFK than walk fire making because the majority of the time you're fire making forwards. This could be used to play multiple alt accounts if that's something you want to do. Unfortunately in free to play this isn't sustainable because we don't have quicker run energy regeneration from agility levels. It would be possible to grab energy potions every now and then from the bank while doing this but I don't think it's worth the extra GP. With this method, you must run backwards and light a log within 4 ticks, or every 2.4 seconds. Once you reach the GE walls, just click roughly in the same area I'm clicking on in this clip. Then just forward fire make casually back to the bank booth. On to fire bearing. I'd like to start off by saying there could be a way to do this continuously without losing ticks, but I have not found a way just yet. This method, though, is still over EHP with current free-to-play EHP rates at roughly 1.2 EHP per hour. It is very similar to walk fire making, except there are six rows of fires instead of four, since you're only lighting half of an inventory of logs every time you bank. Light your first log, bury the first bone, then click light on the log again. Bury the next bone, then click two tiles to the east, then light the next log on the first tile you move towards. Bury the next bone, then light the next log, and repeat. Once you reach the end of the sixth line of fires, unnote the stack of bones in the top left of your inventory, then move to the starting point and continue to bury it in inventory of bones, then start the process from the beginning. Getting level 99 prayer before you start combats can be beneficial. Free to play prayer is the slowest and most expensive skill, giving players who complete it a higher level of social status. I believe if you can finish this skill, you can finish them all. Start by keeping a stack of noted bones in your inventory closest to a bank chest. Bank chests can be found at a PvP world, Lumbridge, Edgeville, Falador, as well as Clan Wars, Castle Wars, and also Shanty Pass. Yes, you can unnote things at Shanty Pass, but you cannot actually bank there. Prayer is quite simple. Just click a bone every two game ticks. The only complicated part about it is getting the timing down to do a zero tick loss bank. To unnote, just like fire with fire making, use the noted bones on the bank chest and press the 1 key. Pay close attention to the timing in this clip to see how to zero tick bank. From level 1 to 99, killing 1 defense alt accounts in the clan wars free for all portal is the most efficient way to gain combat XP. This applies to all your melee skills and ranged. If you're milling, bring an inventory of strength potions and have the prayer bonus ultimate strength enabled in your quick prayers option. Kill one of your alts till it runs out of wines, then immediately attack the second alt after the final hit. While you're killing the second alt, bank for wines on the other and return back into the portal. Once your main account runs out of prayer points, exit the portal and immediately return back to killing your alts. Exiting the portal in any way recharges prayer points, running energy, and hit points. You will have to look up the max hits for yourself, but drink a dose of energy potions at whatever the max hit you can hit is. For me, at level 99 strength, I repot at 110 strength. Once you run out of strength potions, just run back to the bank chest and start again. As for what to wield for melees, bring a monk's robe top and bottom, a god helmet and shield an amulet of strength or power. This depends on your strength level in some cases. And of course, a rune scimitar. If you are ranging, bring the best available arrows up to adamant. Clan Wars by default picks up your arrows and returns them to you once you leave the portal. You also need to wield a green dehyde body, chaps, and van braces, a coif, an amulet of power, and a maple shortbow on rapid. Boots and a cape are optional because they do not provide offensive bonuses. Also, don't forget to switch your quick prayers to Eagle Eye. Another option for combats is killing your one defense alts and castle wars. This provides identical XP rates and has the benefit of giving castle wars tickets. You will need to purchase castle wars bracelets from the Grand Exchange for each of your accounts. These bracelets allow you to deal 20% more damage to players holding the flag and also allow bandages to heal 50% more health. 
What to wield with this method is the same as with Clan Wars, except without the headgear or a cape. To obtain three tickets per game as opposed to two, when the score is zero to zero, you will need to play a fourth account to capture the flag while you're killing your two alts on your main. This account will not need a bracelet. Right before the game starts, as you wait in the lobby area, equip your bracelets. Exit the waiting area on all of your accounts so you don't get kicked out of the game. On one of your two one defense alts, withdraw an inventory of bandages and run to the opposite castle and capture the flag. Start attacking this one defense alt once it reaches your castle and lure it yourself to the opposing side while continuously being in combat. Once you've made it to this castle, leave yourself right outside the portal room and keep killing your alts until the game ends. While you're killing these alts, capture the flag on your fourth account this account will be on your mains team. Once the game ends, start the next game and train a bank standing skill like prayer, crafting, or cooking while you wait through the five minutes. If you don't plan on doing castle wars or clan wars for combats, start with killing cows to level 20 in all combats. Then move on to minotaurs in the first level of the stronghold of security until you're level 30 in all combats. From here, you can continue to kill flesh crawlers until max combats, or at level 80 defense, you can move on to spiders in the third level of Stronghold Security. Flesh crawlers have a very valuable drop, the bottom scepter piece. You can use these pieces to recharge an imbued skull scepter, which can be obtained by combining the pieces you get from minotaurs, flesh crawlers, catapulpons, and anku's drop tables. These Skull Scepter pieces will be useful for both combats as well as runecrafting. The Skull Scepter teleport takes you directly to the center of Barbarian Village, just outside the exit of Stronghold of Security. It just so happens the Body Temple is just northwest of this teleport location. I will talk more about this in detail when I get to runecrafting. There are two main locations to kill flesh crawlers. One is the most northwestern room in the second level of SOS, and the other is just west of the central room. There are also level 56 zombies in the room, so they will keep aggroing you until you are 113 combat. If you didn't know already, most monsters that are aggressive outside of the wilderness will be aggressive towards you until you are 2 times plus 1 their combat level. An important part of AFK in combats is knowing how to re-aggro once you de-aggro. The majority of the time, you will need to alternate which direction you run. For fleshies, both rooms require that you alternate between running north and running south. When it comes to what food to bring, swordfish and apple pies both heal the same. Apple pies do make you lose a couple ticks extra over swordfish, but the purpose of AFK in combat is sustainability and not maximum efficiency. Speaking of which, I like to leave rapid heal going while I AFK combats, but you could also leave on ultimate strength or eagle eye if you'd like. The benefit of apple pie is they only cost 16 GP each in reality if you bank your pie dishes versus swordfish, which cost 355 GP each. At 99 defense, I bring four strength potions, my skull scepter imbued, and an inventory of apple pies with me to spiders. You may have to do some testing on your own of how many strength potions will last you an inventory of food. Head on down to the third level of SOS. There are three possible rooms to kill spiders in, but the one I'm about to show is my personal preference, because there are always fewer players there. I will leave a link to a giant spider killing guide that was made by Water, a high level free to play player from the pre EOC days. In his video, he shows you each of the rooms and where to reagro. The first reagro location is the most northern tile of the room. You will use this after they initially deagro for the first time. The second is the most southern tile in the room. After this, just keep switching between the northernmost tile and the southernmost tile. In some cases, neither will work, so run to the western door, but don't go through it. This will work most of the time, but if it doesn't, run all the way to the eastern and southernmost tile of the room, and that will work also. When you run out of food and potions, open your minigames tab, which is located in the quest tab by clicking the red button. Click the drop down menu, click clan wars, then click the teleport button in the bottom right of the tab. 
Here, you can rebank, heal yourself, and restore prayer points by entering the Clan Wars free for all portal and teleporting back to SOS. Another thing to mention is, if there is another player killing spiders or fleshies in the same room as you, the monsters have a less likely chance of getting stuck if you stand inside of the other player. As for what to bring with melee, bring your best in slot offensive gear, amulet of strength or power, and rune scimitar, and your best in slot defensive gear on top of that. Full god armor, boots, a cape, and green dehyde van braces. As for what to bring for ranged, do not sacrifice defensive bonus for offensive. Wear the same thing that I mentioned for the Clan Wars range training. If you're running out of food too quickly, you can always use an alt to bring you food 